This is part five in the recording a song with a budget audio interface and a budget microphone series. And in this video, I'm going to be recording vocals using the Behringer XM8500 dynamic microphone, and that's connected directly to my Behringer UM2 audio interface. I'm Zane, welcome to Simple Green Tech, where it's my goal to help you conquer the tech so you can unleash your creativity. And I do this by providing easy to follow audio tech tips, tutorials, and reviews. Now I've included a link to all of the software and the hardware that I'm using in this video, just in case you want to check any of that out, check the description for those links. And if you're new to this series, basically what I'm doing is I'm recording a song that I'm going to be releasing once it's finished. And I'm using a Behringer UM2 audio interface, a Behringer XM8500 microphone. I'm only using free plugins and I'm using all of the free features that are available in Traction waveform free. Now, typically when I'm doing vocals on a track, I'll record the lead vocals first and then I'll record any backing vocals after. And here's my Behringer XM8500 microphone. It is connected directly to the Behringer UM2. And the only thing that is not stock on this microphone is I put one of these foam windscreens on there just to protect the microphone. I think it's like three bucks. I'll be sure to link to that down in the description, but that's the only thing that's different from this Behringer XM8500 microphone compared to when you first buy it. So let's jump into waveform and start recording. So here's our song so far. If you've watched the previous video, I actually re-recorded one of the guitar parts just before I made this video as I wasn't too happy with guitar one when I was editing the video, but that's all I've changed since the last video. So now I'm going to create a new track and I'm going to name this one lead Vox. Now, if you have a slower computer and you have a lot of tracks in your song, and maybe your computer's a little sluggish when recording onto a new track, or maybe you have a lot of plugins currently on your track and you don't want to change that. You can actually mix down everything that you have so far, then create a new project and record your vocals into that new project and then copy and paste them into your original project. If you wanted, that's something that will work if your computer's a little slow, but I'm going to attempt to record directly into the main project here can see I have some levels going in, which is great. I'm not actually speaking into that microphone. I'm speaking into the one that's recording the video. So the levels don't look the greatest, but I did test the levels out earlier and I have them all set for this recording. So we're pretty much good to go. What I'm going to do is try to record the whole song the whole way through. So I'm probably going to edit the video so you won't see the full recording, but we will go through the different parts later on. Let me just arm this track for recording. And now I just need to press the record button. All right, so I have the first vocal take here and typically I'll record like five takes just in case I need to switch some parts out or it's also useful for doubling your vocal. So now I'm going to record some more takes in and what I usually do is just create another track and I'll call this Vox take one. And then I'm just going to drag this down onto that track there and we'll mute it. And then we'll just record some more takes onto here. So I'm just going to edit the video right now and I'll come back when I have some more takes done. And now, as you can see, I have a few more takes in here and typically the last take is my favorite one, but sometimes my voice can be fatigued by that take. So one of the other takes might be better. I'll usually go through each section auditioning, which one is best. So I'll show you what that kind of looks like right now. And then you can hear what this sounds like. So this is the last take here that's still on the lead Vox track that I recorded into. So let's just have a listen to that right now. Radio. Okay. Keep in mind, this is a dry vocal track. There's no effects on there so far. And also none of the levels have been done for the mix either. So that's all going to change, but uh, that's the chorus part right there. Now let's get into the verse part. 
gotta keep the playlist safe. Gotta be in the workplace. All right, say I wasn't a fan of that. Maybe I like this version here better. Let's have a listen to what that sounds like. Gotta keep the playlist safe. Gotta be in the workplace. All right, not really a fan of that one. Gotta keep the playlist safe. Definitely not a fan of that one. Gotta keep the playlist safe. No, I think I'm a fan of that final one here. So I'm going to stick with that for this part, but uh, here's the pre-chorus part. Let's listen to that. It's time you realize you're not fooling anyone. The magic of radio is gone. Radio. I'm okay with all of this so far. And there's one more section here, the bridge that I'm going to listen to. You stop the rock. We stop listening. I guess you get what you're giving. You stop being interesting. You gave us Johnny Jukebox. Radio killed the rock star. So there is that one part right here that kind of messed up on. Let's hear how this sounds. Radio killed the rock star. Radio. Oh, radio. You killed the rock star. Radio. Eh, I'm going to leave this one. I don't mind. Radio killed the rock star. Radio. And I kind of went for this sort of 80s sound, like Joey Ramone meets Jim Morrison or something. I don't know why I went for that sound with my vocal, but that's kind of what I'm going to do for the lead vocals for this. And it's going to be fun to get into the mixing part where I add some reverb, delay, and some saturation. Before I get into recording the backing vocals, I just want to ask if you're enjoying this video so far and you're getting some value out of it, can you please hit that thumbs up button? It really helps my channel out and I appreciate it so much. Now let's get back into traction. The next thing I normally do is record a backing vocal and I want to add a backing vocal for the chorus section here. So usually I only do it for one chorus section and then I'll just copy it over to the others. So that's what I'm going to do right here. I'll create a new track. All right, so I'm just going to record the chorus section of the backing vocal here. And I'll likely do a few takes on that, but let's go through the first take right now. Radio. So there's our first take on the backing vocal. Let's hear how it sounds put together here. Radio. And again, I'm going to do a couple more takes on that just so I have more takes of the backing vocal. And sometimes I like to use multiple takes so it makes that backing vocal sound like there's more than one person doing it. I'll do that right now. All right, so I have some more backing vocal takes and I may use all of these in the mix. I'll have to hear how it sounds all put together, but here's what it sounds like right now. Radio. So I'm getting pretty excited with how this song's coming along. I actually think this vocal track doesn't sound too bad. I'm not talking about my actual singing. I'm talking about the audio quality is 
fairly decent on this, and I think we can clean it up pretty easily by adding some EQ and saturation and some effects like that on there, the typical effects you would put on a vocal track anyway. So yeah, I'm really happy with this progress. I'm looking forward to start mixing it, and I'm probably going to also add some keyboards in there. If you want to continue along with this series and find out how this song turns out, click the video on the screen right now. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. For Simple Green Tech, I'm Zane. Keep creating, and we'll talk soon.